Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at a $60 budget Ishin Two Heavens as One deck tech. From Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, this 3-4 human samurai says if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent new control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this deck is all about those attacking triggers, having creatures that attack and give you even more creatures, creatures that attack and give you treasure, and even enchantments that will trigger those attacking creatures. Now, let's get into this budget deck deck. As always, we are starting this budget brew off hot with all of that ramp. First on up is Dark Ritual, that says for one swamp, you add three swamp to your mana pool, and Boros Signet to pay one tap and add Boros to your mana pool. Filling out the rest of those Signets, we also have Orzov and Rakdos, to both pay one tap and add Orzov or Rakdos to your mana pool. Some Commander Classics first with Commander Sphere, that says you tap to add one mana of any colour in your Commander's colour identity, and Mind Stone to tap to add colourless, with both of them being sacrificial options to draw you some cards. We also have Felwar Stone that you can tap and add a mana of any colour in your Commander's colour identity, and Prismatic Lens to tap to add a colourless, or pay one and tap to add one mana of any colour. There's Mardu Banner to add any of those Mardu colours that you can also pay and sacrifice to draw a card. And from Ikoria, we have Survive Crystal that you can tap to add any of those Mardu colours again that you can also cycle. There is Arcane Signet to tap to add one mana of any colour in your Commander's colour identity. And finally, we have Soul Ring. Because Soul Ring. Now before we get into all those attacking creature creators, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all things MTG. Subscribing is completely free to do and we're almost at 2,000 subscribers. We've also just added a channel membership option, so you can become a prickly pal today and help support the channel. As we've just said, let's look at all those attacking trigger creature creators. First on up we have Krenko Tin Streak Kingpin that says whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it and then create a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Krenko's power. And Leonin War Leader that says whenever it attacks, Create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink that are tapped and attacking. There is also legendary vehicle Parhelion II with flying first strike and vigilance that says whenever it attacks, create two 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking. And Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs that says whenever a creature and opponent control attacks, if you're the defending player, put a 3-3 red ogre creature token onto the battlefield unless that creature's controller pays 3. Now we want loads of these creature creators in there because with Ishin we are creating two every time this attack trigger happens. We have Mardu Strike Leader that says whenever it attacks put a 2-1 black warrior creature token onto the battlefield with that added dash mechanic. And Sky Knight Vanguard, the flying human knight that says whenever it attacks create a 1-1 white soldier creature token that's tapped and attacking. There's Rakshasha Debaser, that says whenever it attacks, put target creature card from defending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, with the always useful in commander Encore mechanic, and everyone's favourite Sun Titan, the vigilant giant that when it ETBs or attacks, you may return target permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. You love to see it. Moving on to the last few, there is Basri Ket, and we're focusing on that minus two. This is whenever one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. And Adeline Resplendent Cathar, this is whenever you attack, for each opponent create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control and its power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures you control. So if you can get any of these triggering off twice with Ishin, you are winning. And finally, we'll look at Launch the Fleet. It has that Strive ability that says it costs one more to cast for each target beyond the first. And until end of turn, any number of target creatures gain. Whenever this creature attacks, put a 1-1 white soldier creature token onto the battlefield that's tapped and attacking. If you've got that big army and you can pay this, that can be huge. We've looked at those creatures that will trigger and create even more creatures, but now let's look at the rest that have varying attack triggering abilities. First up from Ixlan, we have Captain Lannery Storm that says whenever it attacks, create a colourless treasure artifact token that you can sacrifice and add one colour to your mana pool. And Hoarding Ogre that says whenever it attacks, roll a d20. Depending on what you roll, you create that many treasure tokens, but if you're landing on that 20, you create a massive 3. There is Adriana, Captain of the Guard, with melee, 
which is whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each opponent that you attacked with a creature this combat, and it gives all of your other creatures melee. And there's the hilariously named Ankle Shanka, the Goblin Berserk with haste that when attacks, creatures you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. Now of course this won't benefit from those double Ishin triggers, but getting all of your attacking creatures first strike and death touch could be huge. For some excellent evil goodness we have Itali Primal Storm that says when it attacks exile the top card of each player's library with you being able to then cast that card without paying its mana cost. And Karazakar the Eye Tyrant that says whenever you attack a player tap target creatures that player controls and goad it. And whenever an opponent attacks another one of your opponents you and that attacking player each draw a card and lose one life. For some more goady goodness we have Vengeful Ancestor, the Flying Dragon Spirit that says whenever it ETBs or attacks, go target creature. And whenever goaded creature attacks, it deals one damage to its controller. And brilliant equipment, Explorer Scope, that says whenever equipped creature attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. That is some ramp that you love to see. And we have Ember Wild Captain, the pirate that ETBs and gives you Monarch, and whenever an opponent attacks you whilst you're the monarch, Ember Wild Captain deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand. So if they have a full hand of 7, with that triggering twice with Ishin, they're getting hit with a massive 14 damage. And Mardu Shadow Spear, the one drop human warrior that when it attacks, each opponent loses one life, again with that dash mechanic. There is Coastline Marauders, the trampley human pirate that when it attacks it gets plus one plus naught until end of turn for each land defending player controls. With that always commander loved encore mechanic. And Hellrider, the hasty devil that says whenever a creature you control attacks, Hellrider deals one damage to defending player. We've added in Audacious Thief that says when it attacks you draw a card and lose a life. And Brutal Horde Chief that says whenever a creature you control attacks, defending player loses one life and you gain one life. You also have that option to pay and it says creatures your opponents control block this turn if able and you choose how those creatures block. All of these creatures that we've got here are so good with Ishin because as we said whenever we're going to attack all those triggers will be hitting an extra time thanks to that ability that Ishin has and you'll easily be getting a good control of the board. On to the last few we have Honoured Crop Captain. This is whenever it attacks other attacking creatures get plus one plus naught until end of turn. And Inferno Titan, that you can pay a red, and Inferno Titan gets plus one plus naught until end of turn. And when it ETBs or attacks, it deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three target creatures and or players. And we have Tectonic Giant, that says when it attacks, it can deal three damage to each opponent, or exile the top two cards of your library, choosing one of them, and you can play that card until the end of your next turn. Before we go on to the best of the rest, we're going to look at a load of enchantments we've added that really benefit you from attacking. First one up is Campaign of Vengeance that says whenever a creature you control attacks, defending player loses one life and you gain one life. And Fable of the Mirror Breaker where that first saga says create a 2-2 Goblin Shaman creature token with whenever this creature attacks, create a treasure token. There is brilliant card Mardu Ascendancy that says whenever a non-token creature you control attacks, put a 1-1 red goblin creature token onto the field tapped and attacking. And then you can sacrifice this enchantment to give creatures you control plus 0, plus 3 until end of turn. And Sparring Regimen that says whenever you attack, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target attacking creature and untap it. There's Gleam of Battle that says whenever a creature you control attacks, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. And Unquenchable Fury an aura that says enchanted creature has whenever this creature attacks it deals x damage to defending player where x is the number of cards in their hand and for a bonus whenever it's put into a graveyard from the field return it to your hand continuing the goady goodness we have earlier we have parasitic impetus that says enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and is goaded and when enchanted creature attacks its controller loses two life and you gain two life and we have Shiny Impetus, again giving Enchanted Creature plus two plus two and Goad. And when Enchanted Creature attacks, it creates you a nice shiny treasure token. And lastly, there is Revenge of Ravens. This is whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. And as always, before we finish on up with those lands, we're looking at the best of the rest in this budget brew. First one up is Faithless Looting, to draw you two cards, then discarding two, with that added flashback option, and sign in blood that says target player draws two cards and loses two life. 
For some more card draw, we have Village Rights that says as an additional cost to cast this spell, you must sack a creature, but you get two tasty cards. And Classic Enchantment Greed to pay two life and draw a card. For some card draw removal hybrid, we have You Are Already Dead. This says destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn and draw a card. And D Spark that says exile target permanent with mana value 4 or greater. Next on up is Mortify. This says destroy target creature or enchantment. And we also have Terminate. This says destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. We've added in Relentless Assault. This says untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase, followed by an additional main phase. And just for a bit of filthy fun, we added in Ruinous Ultimatum, to destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. Because why not add a one-sided board wipe where you can? There is Boris Charm that does one of the three following options. Deal 4 damage to target player, permanents you control are indestructible this turn, or target creature gains double strike until end of turn and Sarah's Blessing to give all of your creatures vigilance. For some added protection we've also added in Shijiri Shelter which can also double up as a nice little plains. And finally there is Disrupt Decorum that says goad all creatures you don't control. And finally as always we're looking at all of those lands. First on up we're starting with those basics and here as it's a fairly even split we have 11 mountain, 10 plains and 10 swamp. For some Commander Classics we have Command Tower to tap and add one mana of any colour in your Commander's colour identity and Exotic Orchard to tap and add one mana of any colour that a land an opponent controls could produce. And for the final two we have some of the best in Evolving Worlds and Terramorphic Expanse to both tap, sacrifice and search your library for a basic land card putting it onto the field tapped. Of course there are plenty and plenty of lands that are really good for an Ishian deck but as it is just a budget brew, we're leaving it to the very, very classics here. Ishin is a fantastic commander, and in my opinion is one of, if not the best, to come from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Now I do really want to make a Satoru Umazawa deck myself, but I think I might have to push that out of the way to have myself some Ishin.